So uh, what you guys see here is a, a nest table that I decided to make. Um, I had uh, seen, I think it's Charles Lushlier, uh had had his account on Etsy where he'd made these. And uh, the original idea was to have it work with the TV. Uh, you'll hear me talk about it in the video. Uh, just going to tell you that didn't happen. I just wound up uh, doing the buttons. Uh, I never put those Bluetooth speakers in there. And... Uh, uh, the idea was to sell this uh, and make a, a pretty good profit on it, and uh, I thought it wouldn't miss. I still have it. Uh, uh, anybody that's made furniture, uh, you know, might have gone through that before. But, uh, yeah, um, I did want to um, showcase the process. Maybe there's a woodworker that's watching or somebody that thinks they can do it. Um, this might encourage them to give it a try. Um and I am in Eastern North Carolina. This was shot uh, at Woody's Wood Shop, you know. So if you need some lumber, um, you certainly uh, check them out. And uh, if you need me to make you some furniture, uh, give me a holler. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. So uh, I really also thought that it would be very important to put this at the front of the video. Uh, the table that you see here. Uh, is the table that I used mostly to work on this and there's a router table off to the side You do not need a fancy table uh, or uh, uh, clamps or anything to uh, Put a table together like this is what you see is what I used most of the drills and stuff were the ones like this that you see um, Nothing fancy now granted the shop over my head did help out um, But like we said for what it was worth I was working and that was kind of a benefit, but uh uh, yeah, you don't need uh, a, uh, a fancy woodworking bench to do really awesome stuff. So uh, for this part of the project, uh, really, really is kind of starting everything off. What happened here was is uh, I was uh, cutting this piece with the table saw. Oh, okay, I remember now. There was a part of it on the end that had a check that had gotten in it. Uh, what happened was is uh, I'd, I'd actually had the board... Uh, uh, it, gosh, this was probably four years ago now, uh, in an aluminum toolbox because I was moving and I'd put it in it. And uh, by the time I'd come back, I had a giant crack uh, in what I had made there. So I had to put that piece in there that you guys saw. Uh, I did uh, freehand that uh, to, to get it to work. And uh, I don't think I have me showing it, but uh, I think I wound up using a hand plane to thin it down. And uh, I do want to add in this section of the video because it's a good place for it. Uh, it is extremely hard to uh, have your camera sitting up straight and try to record this stuff at the same time. Um, I found that was the most difficult part. While you see this going on, you may notice that uh, those clamps don't have a piece of wood behind them. Uh, it is the back side of the piece, and I did sand out any of the marks that the clamps made in it.
Damn. What? Took off a little bit more than I wanted to, but. So uh, the fellow that just walked by there, that was uh, Matthew Dean. He's the owner of Woody's Wood Shop out in Wilmington. And, uh, you know, you couldn't really see that much of him, but it was him. So what I did there is I grabbed another clamp to uh, go lengthways. Uh, there was just a little bit of a gap in there that I wanted the uh, board to pinch together so that it would it would hold longer term. So uh, I also noticed too that in this picture that uh, I have got this green shirt on that I have had for a long time. And uh, I'm telling you, I, I realize how much like Luigi I look uh, in this, uh, this uh, recording here. Um, not uh not something i wear every day but uh definitely have done a lot of work in that shirt there uh I, you know and i still do have it maybe i shouldn't be proud of that and there was one thing that i also thought about too uh young woodworkers if you guys are uh watching this uh or, or maybe you're an older person you will notice how little talking is being done uh, you notice that my temper is not going out of control uh, I'm not finding a bunch of other things to do I'm totally focused on what I'm doing so keeping a level head calm patient you know uh, this is uh, the fastest way to get one of these projects done so uh, I did want to add that uh, that's a Powermatic uh, 210 or 220 planer it's a 22 inch spiral cutter head planer and I did have to repair that planer um, folks uh, for any of those that own them uh, the the sleeves for the shaft does come out and uh, I would suggest getting sleeve retainer uh, for your shaft and because it'll break the time and chain in it but uh yeah just a side note uh, I did repair that thing So I'm about to say a bad word, but I figured I'd leave it in. So skip past it if you need to. So uh, you guys could probably hear me uh, uh, breathing and sounding a little aggravating and uh, kind of important to keep that in because uh, that is uh, what somebody that had been working about five hours before uh, he had worked on that uh, normally sounds like. So uh, it, it makes the video a little bit more authentic. I know how I would uh, figure out my measurement for doing the circle while this is like basic woodworking knowledge for anybody that's you know worked with calipers they'll know how to do this but if you haven't worked with calipers you're, you're gonna quickly gonna see kind of what you run into so as you can see my measurement I've got it going from circle to circle and it looks like 4.951 but as you can see you'll have a little bit of adjustment so you gotta fiddle around with it until you think that you've got it you know and I'm going at 
49.9. And what I'll do is I'll go around a few times and I'll check it the other way around just to see what I got the other way around. Just to make sure. And it looks like it's matching at 49.1, even though it's showing 40 point six five right now and what i'll do is i'll just play around with that and go around and kind of make sure i get a number that's that's kind of how how you would figure that out and then just from there what we'll do is uh, it got two choices we could either go on the lathe and turn that um but preferably what i'll probably wind up doing is probably going to be doing it on the router table uh with a circle cutting jig uh to get it to the size that i need all right well i will um I'll show you the next part uh, when I when I get to it later on. Now, as y'all can see, I started recording again after I put the clamps back. You'll probably see that little bit of glue right there. Uh, that's just the last little bit of residual glue that I'm going to have to deal with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off right now. There's no real reason to show it again. And uh, I'll start filming again once I have the buttons ready. Or, you know what, as a matter of fact, I'll show you how we measure for the buttons before going on and continue. So in uh, case anybody is wondering, the uh, inlays that you are about to see, um, the longer ones, I did, I cut them on the table saw, and uh, I used this, uh, this is a Powermat at 66, I got the dado stack on it. Uh, now, of course, I didn't really use it that much uh, with dados, but uh, yeah, that, uh, and let's see, I rounded the corners using a uh, file, and uh, I put them in, and uh, let's see, Oh, what do you call those? You got those wood Jorgensen clamps that you can use to clamp those things in there. Uh, it's kind of how I got them down in there, but uh, I guess that part's not pictured. Okay, so here's the nest table, and kind of at this point you could see what I've done so far. Um, what's going to be done to this is, is you can see where the directional pad is empty, and the two buttons over there, and then we have the two buttons that'll be underneath there. Um, I am going to put this in a uh, square frame and I'm gonna have it where it has legs. And then underneath that, um, that square frame, I'm gonna have uh, some sort of panel underneath there that I'm gonna attach the buttons to. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have like a little spring system such that these pieces will when you press down on them and it hits the uh the button it'll actually work with the 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 gamepad inverter that i'll be putting into this so that you can uh, use it on your tv and i'll also be having a set of bluetooth speakers but uh kind of where i'm at right this minute is if y'all can see here i've got this piece here and uh it has been datoed out and what this is going to be used for is to do my inlay on this D-pad so that you see that instead of this. Um, just having it look a little bit better and then it matches all the other inlays. Um, so what I will do, and like if anybody's kind of curious how I came up with how to do this, I simply just took this stick and I lined it right up against that edge. And let's see here, there we have it where you can see Kind of hard to do this you know when you're by yourself but i mean it's all right here we'll do it that way well, that's perfect so you can see so what you do is you line that edge up right there with there and you can take a pencil and you can mark it right there that edge and it'll be dead on accurate and you see from there where it makes that line now originally the first time i did this I had cut exactly what you see there, that small little square. And what I wound up with was this here. So what I had to do is I just took it back on the dado blade and cut it back and uh, got there. And that is perfect. And as you see, it kind of fits quite nicely all the way around there. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be the next step in the project. Uh, I, what I have to do is I have to dado these again so they're going to be attached all with dados going all the way across and granted it's not consistent with the rest of the look um that's that's kind of what i came up with because uh 
normally what you would do is you could just miter these at a 45 and take a piece of tape and glue them together, but that doesn't work because if you look here and you look right here, the distance is not the same. And uh, that, that would be just a nightmare trying to use the, the tape on the end to get those together to have that technique work like it's supposed to. But um, I'll be showing more of the project as it goes. Um, and what I'll also try to do is kind of do clips of it in order. Um, or probably we'll even just do another section of it, having it kind of in order of what I did. Um, and I guess if anybody is curious, like to cut these inlays out, I want to say it probably took about 20 minutes to cut all these inlays out and in all these circles on the CNC machine. So I can suggest if anybody's like interested in doing this, um, yeah, use a CNC machine. Doing it by hand is cool, but you'll make a lot more of them if you, if you use a CNC machine and you got access to one. So uh, I'm going to start on another video log here. So what I've done is for this nest table, I had to make the round buttons. So I used my circle cutting jig and I kind of figured out um, that my pieces here were 120 millimeters. And um, so I kind of set that up based on that saw over there uh, to that position. And what I did was, this, well, they're a little bit bigger now, but I drilled uh, holes in the back of it to the size of that dowel right there. And I just uh, took my time cutting it and uh, Obviously, it wasn't this clean, so I put this insert in it, and uh, where is it at? I don't, I don't see it on the, the table here, but I took a quarter inch by 20. Here's the, the head of the screw that I cut off because it's just kind of what I had on hand. And I took this, these, these uh, buttons here, and I chucked them in that drill press over there. And uh, went and did, uh, started off with 40 grit, went up to 80. Uh, you know, then to 120, 180, uh, 400, and 600. And, uh, you know, uh, something we also had on hand was uh, ultra-fine steel wool. And I got a piece of that right here. And this is uh, just, you know, ultra-fine uh, Scotch-Brite. And I am going to tell you what, those pieces with that Scotch-Brite, I'm amazed at how spectacular that turned out i mean i'm sitting here looking on the camera and it just doesn't even it just doesn't even get them in a way i'm i'm, I'm almost ashamed that i put linseed oil on it because it darkened it so much but they were looking slamming even without it but uh yeah these these are just it's just making that grain just pop um and they're probably going to be the best looking part of the whole project uh, unfortunately, the button, other buttons aren't going to be quite as nice, but it still should be okay. You know, people need to understand that you can't turn the rest of it to get it polished quite so nicely. Guys, I figured now would be a fine time to kind of go over um, securing the back piece that goes for my back panel so what's going to happen is this control panel here's what the uh, buttons are going to mount to on this once it's in there and uh as you can see what i'm doing is i'm putting these screws in here and what will happen is is you'll be able to tighten this up here and you see where the screw is coming out there what's going to happen is is if you look and we need to walk I mean, it probably would have helped if I had the piece already over here, so you can see. So what's going to happen is, is where these pieces here, this panel is going to come inside here, and right here I've got this lip, and this lip is where those screws are going to catch on at, and then that, it's going to push that piece up in here and then up in here um and that's how that's going to work so getting back on the next part of this as you guys could probably notice my, my hole here is a little jagged i went on ahead and i free-handed these with the router i mean they're a little oblong but as far as getting this screw in here 
you know, make or break, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. And it's set up this way so you can get the things in and out. You know, I was using the Makita track saw guide there as a guide to have the router um, up against the, uh, the fence. Kind of like that. And you can align that track saw up and it'll ride across that track saw. So anybody who's got a, um, a track saw, they can use that as a guide for the router. It works fantastic for doing straight cuts. But uh, in this case, you can notice that I've got one more left. And this one here, I'm probably just going to go on ahead and make this as circular as I can. Um, and really, what I did to determine this length is I took one of these screws here and I kind of looked at it, figured out how long that it needed to be such that I could get it in there and still be able to use my tool to, to tighten them down. So what we have there is pretty good. You know, I may come in here and, and do some more with this, but if I don't do any more with it, it's not like it's going to really matter that much. All right, one more thing that I wanted to go over too. Um, for this particular router, I don't have uh, a depth stop call on it. And of course I do have a plunge base that is uh, right over there in the drawer, but I didn't hook the plunge base up to it because uh, a little bit easier to see out of this and I got that wide thing there. So what I did to set my depth is I just put like a piece of tape right here. And uh, that piece of tape is helping me gauge how far down I need to set my router so my cut doesn't go through the board. Another very important thing to go over. You notice on the back of my piece here, I got this giant ass check and a bunch of checking all up in here. And uh, that is just kind of not cool. So what we do uh, in woodworking to handle this uh, really aggravating problem is we take and we put super glue in these cracks. And uh, we do this. They have thin that you can buy this really good. This is uh, like more of a thick gel that I'm using. And uh, folks, uh, you know, a lot of people encourage the use of uh, taking sawdust and, uh, and, and filling these, but uh, I'm gonna tell you insider secret. It's one of the biggest waste of times that uh, you'll ever encounter. Um, like really, it's better if you're gonna do it to get yourself some, you know, some colored super glue. And the only reason why I'm walking away right this second is I am looking for something. Another trick that you can use with super glue is uh, instead of having this, uh, this real thick deal, I'm gonna take this, uh, this stick right here and kinda get everything in a, and get it down. And I probably put way too much on it, so you can see that there. I'll come back and set excess off. So I got this stuff called P210, it's activator. They also have some NSF stuff. I like this better because it doesn't smell as bad. And you just take it and you spray it on top of that super glue that you just applied. And if you look, you can already see it starting to react uh, inside there. And uh, it literally, takes about five seconds and, and the stuff is pretty much cured so that I'm having to hit it again here uh, another thing about this stuff too is if this uh, if this stuff is wet it doesn't cure quite so fast and plus uh, it'll also soften the glue a little bit until the uh, the p210 kind of evaporates but what will happen is this stuff will yeah, it's already, yeah, it's already pretty much cured. It's still a little soft with the, the, the stuff still drying, but it's like curing on my hands instantly. So yeah, P210, glue activator, awesome stuff. Like this, uh, I'm to finish in this part of it. I didn't really get to show off before kind of how I like to do finish, but I like to go on ahead, pour some bold linseed oil on there. Well, at least we're using linseed oil for this project. As you notice, very important, got the little plastic baggie there underneath. And I am just taking it and rubbing that in. And uh, I'm not really worried too much about it. I'm just trying to get it all over the surface as quickly as I can. This, this is the cool thing about using oil though. You can get away with doing this and uh, going quite quickly. See, I missed a screw there. And uh, 
It, uh, it doesn't hurt the screw bolts if uh, a little bit of this oil gets on it. It's better that it doesn't because there's a dryer in this oil that will cause it to harden a little bit. So it may cause a little bit of gumminess or stickiness or dirt to attract to those threads. Um, but folks, we're talking like a really long time before you'd probably actually have trouble getting them in and out of there. So, and then I'm just coming over here. Pouring that right in, pouring that right in, pouring that right in, over here, pouring that right in, and then getting anywhere else I might have missed, and uh, coming in here, and like, check it out, like I'm getting all these crevices and corners, and going ahead and getting it, and this is just going to kind of keep it from warping. Now, I still do have more that I need to do to the other side of this piece. Um, so I do have to lay some stuff out. I'm gonna have to drill some screws and stuff in this. And I'm also still going to have to attach my legs to this base. Um, I kinda haven't figured out quite what I'm gonna do with that yet, but that's okay. I mean, with this oil, really what this oil is just kinda meant to do is to kind of go ahead and seal this wood and just keep it from moving for the so time. There is uh, one thing that I wanted to go over. I was showing these cracks a minute ago that you can see here like how this one kind of goes all the way through the wood and you have the cracking it's way worse on the other side but uh i had mentioned using super glue and maybe you know at, at that point in time i didn't really think to say that much about it but um people if if, if you don't want to use super glue to do this um that's cool that's up to you um they, they have colored super glues that you can use to get a better match. I, I don't really think that it's, most of the time it's not worth it to match the color on it. Uh, contrary to what you might think. I mean, if you do do a color match, you always go darker than what it is. So that as it patinas over time, uh, that uh, it, it'll blend in with the patina and not uh, draw your eye to it. But uh, what I'm getting at about the super glue is, you know, for people that aren't used to doing it, I'm like a pro at this. You know, I actually work here in a wood shop and uh, we sell live edge lumber. And uh, if you look, I got a couple of pieces over here. So like this is a uh, piece of uh, Paduk. And this is a really big piece of wood. And I think it's like 22 board feet altogether. Um, but like with this piece right here, you got this giant crack in it. Uh, you know, some people will cut these off, but most of the time we do not uh, prefer to cut these off. What we'll do is we'll use super glue or we'll use epoxy. And most of the time we use super glue uh, to fill these cracks and it usually does pretty good. Um, and another thing about it too is, is that you'll be working on these and the crack will expand. So obviously you can use your inlays like your butterflies to fill these to keep them from cracking. But uh, if you have a piece that you, know, that you fill with super glue and then you sand on it and then it goes up and up and up, just know that you're, you're not alone and it happens uh, kind of frequently in the shop, but uh, yeah, most of these pieces, particularly this live edge and this fill, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fill these up with epoxy. Even even if you use clear, it'll still look really good. But uh, you know, uh, if if you if you got dyes and you could afford to use dyes um, and spend the extra money on dyes uh, to to make it look that much better, certainly can do that. But uh, just telling you, most of the time you can get away with using clear. Now, folks, this is one part of this project that I thought would be an awesome idea to take and uh, put dados in this and put pieces in here to get it cut out of what I had. Now, of course, that was a great idea. But, folks, when I put the super glue in here to uh, seat those dados, that glue went and ran all the way down there, all the way on that side. And this is like the last one um, that, that I'm getting to. But in order to clean that up, to get it looking nice, like here and there and here and there, uh, as you can see, I've had to take this uh, chisel. And I've had to come in here and I've had to uh, go down here and clean up this glue. Then I've had to take a card scraper 
and card scraper the rest of it. And if I didn't have the card scraper, this is something that definitely would not have gotten done. And the next time I make one of these, I will not be doing that way, rest assuredly. All right, well, I got this to say, you know, I didn't let it whoop me, you know, just a few minutes of work uh, and, it, and it got it, you know, really good. As we can see there, if you look, that's like the worst spot in this whole entire thing. Uh, and I, I would say to this, you know, some people are like, that looks mighty bad in there. But you know something? The more you try to fix some of your mistakes, the worse it would become. So I'll take that, you know, and it also proves that I'm human, you know, that I ain't perfect. Um, but looking on the back, I went on ahead and got uh, all that with 220. And, uh, you know, some of y'all may be thinking, well, 220, why wouldn't you want to go any higher? And, uh, you know, for something like this, there was a time once that I believed if you did everything to 400, 600, and 800 grit, that that was the way to go. But I've done a lot of projects for people, and uh, most of them, um, we wind up going with 180 or or maybe up to 220, but not generally do we go further. And, and you know, it's here for a couple of reasons. One, that the polyurethane, uh, if, if you're using polyurethane or sparurethane varnish, won't stay on there. Granted, this was oiled. And I use bold linseed oil on this. So what's cool about that is if somebody wants to take the thing apart and polish it with a higher grit to get it to that point, they can actually go on ahead and do that. But uh, that's as much as I'm doing to it. Anyhow, later. So what we got here is uh, I've done my dovetail joints and you can see where I got gaps in the piece. And you may notice these big square rectangular holes. I'm about to fill those with some wind gay because I think it would be a very snazzy look. A lot of people that do these when they cut the dados, they generally don't account for the dado and that's why it's there. But in this case, this was well executed and thought out. So that's why well, in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this black super glue right here. And you may be wondering why you would use black for something like this. But the reason is because as time goes on, uh, you'll, you'll, this piece will darken and the black won't draw your eye to it. And if anybody, you know, notice that little deal there going off to the side, it's really no big deal. Because when we uh, when we sand this, this is all going to go away. And now we got here that we're trying to fill in. It's really hard to do holding on to a camera, so I'm going to stop recording. So, uh, for this particular part, uh, is, uh, just kind of showing you what I did for the dovetails. I have a, a lead dovetail jig that I use to, uh, make these pieces. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that I filmed that part of it. Um, it was a little difficult to do and, uh, record at the same time, but, uh, that is what I used. Now, uh, there was, a you know, some slight gappage in that, but I went on ahead and, uh, when you're cutting dovetails, you can just use super glue to kind of fill in there. And, uh, at this point, once I got that box frame together, I'm kind of showing it off a little bit, uh, so that you can kind of see what it looks like. So, uh, folks up to this point, um, you, you know, obviously the video is about finish, but I did want to mention overall, uh, it was every bit of 70 hours plus to, to make this piece of furniture. Um, so uh, that's how much time it took me to do this. Now, if you have a CNC machine, which I did use for the beginning portion of this, it will make things way, way, way quicker. If you could do the whole thing, you could probably cut it down to about 20. So folks, I have jumped way, way ahead on this. Uh, totally forgot to record what I had going on, but uh, I'm to the point now where I'm putting in my D-pads and my buttons, and uh, as you can see, I've got them set up here, and uh, 
What I tried to do in this situation is just center them on these pieces back here and basically put these pieces in like this. Um, for what you see here, I've decided not to put the electronics uh, in with this build, but this would be kind of the way you would want to do it if you were going to put the electronics in it. And from here, you would have some sort of rod here and maybe a rod there with a spring behind it. And then uh, my backer port obviously would be holding the button. Um, and, you know, it might even be able, possible to set this up without having that. I mean, you could even have something where you could have the springs on here and then you could have it where it hits and never have a back panel. But uh, I think preferably for, I think for most people, having that back panel would be the way to go. So, yeah, so at this point, I'm putting my inserts in. And you may notice that they're protruding a little bit. And that is because... If y'all look at the thickness of this guy, and you look at the thickness of my insert, and see that's the thing, you, you have another one sitting here so you don't have to have to stop and pick it up. But if you look at the thickness of this insert, it is, well, kind of trying to have it where my thumb is not in the way. It's just a little hard. If you look, it's basically, the thickness of this insert is the thickness of that entire thing. And I cannot put that all the way in there. Um, so as you can see here, we're going down. It's sticking up a little bit. Playing it safe so it doesn't run all the way through the table. Um, and what we can do here is if you look at what I've done with this guy, I've drilled these small little tiny pilot holes. And what I can do is I can take my insert and I can come over here and I can find... A drill bit that is a little bit bigger than this insert and I can take that drill bit and I can drill it into here so when this thing comes in there it'll set flat and it'll go exactly where those inserts are and hopefully I won't run into problems with alignment because when I did this I kind of lined it up underneath to get it where everything was centered and what we're doing here is we are putting these buttons in here and uh, I guess compared to those guys over there as to these got a lot more clearance so I had to come up with a clever way to uh, get my circles in there kind of at the same distance and what we're doing is we're just taking this paper right here sticking it in there and then we're gonna take our uh, puck or our button rather and stick it in between here and go right like that kind of eyeball it and it looks to me to the left and the right to be about centered. Well, there's uh, nothing quite like it of uh, being a Friday and uh, also being able to get paid uh, and, and do your own project at the same time. But uh, what we're doing here is I'm putting in the final button here just to kind of show you how this whole process works. So there is a little bit of play in these things. Like if you look here at this one, you can see the spacing that I've got kind of in it might not even be 100 percent perfect but uh what you can do is is uh the way i've got it set is i've got these inserts in the back and uh there's only one right way that it goes on and you kind of line it up with the hole and there's a little bit of slop in there so if you need to ever line it back up you can but you just take and uh Put that in there and fasten it down with your Allen key and you're good. So here we have it. I've got the uh, table legs made and uh, you, you can't tell me that I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to making these things. But uh, I've got my leveling plugs on the bottom. Uh, my only real concern is I don't think that these guys are going to get it done. I mean, they were what was at low, so I went on ahead and bought them. But I'm probably going to have to find like a fancy deal. I mean, there's a swivel head in there, kind of letting it move a little bit. But uh, the table's probably not going to even want to put these on here. But is no biggie. If all I got to do left is change these out, I'm doing pretty awesome. Okay, so... Here we have it. So if you get this table, the legs aren't going to be on it. 
and uh, so really simple. The taper is going to be on the outside. And how do you tell where the taper is? The two gold dots are going to be on the inside. And you can do that the same way all the way around. Um, and then what you do is uh, there's an Allen key underneath here. And you just tighten it up with that guy right there. So those legs are removable uh, from that base. So if you ever wanted to hang it on the wall, you could. Um, I did get the swivel casters, and, and they are ungodly expensive uh, for the bottom of that guy. Um, there's a little bit of wobble on the table, but it's not much, not, not much different than you'd find in any coffee table that you bought from Ikea uh, or, or Walmart or wherever the place may be. Um, but uh, if anybody is watching, you know, would, would be interested in buying this piece, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out for me. Um, you know, um, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to say a price uh, on the video, but it is going to be expensive. Um, if you want another piece of furniture made, like I have not uh, made any Maloof chairs or, you know, any, any fancy, uh, not a lot of fancy chairs, but I could, I could definitely make rocking chairs or any furniture. And then, uh, you know, if there's somebody out there that wants a cabin made, you know, you could definitely also get in touch with me for that too. But, uh, yeah, I hope, uh, everybody watching enjoyed this video. Um, and if, if, if you like what you see, please share it with your friends. I need the word to get out that I'm making this stuff so that uh, people can buy it. So thank you. You have appreciate it.